So today I'm going to be making some capacitor kits for different monitors I've got coming up. And I thought maybe it would be beneficial for me to do a follow-up video on how to make capacitor kits. And I could show you a little bit more on what the exact details are when you see a couple of symbols or uh, letters written on the side of a capacitor and also help you pick a better capacitor because honestly the recommendations that you're going to find for replacement from your service manual is going to be very vague in general and there's going to be a lot of different choices for you and it can be overwhelming so I thought I'd just show you and maybe make it a little bit easier and narrow down some of the choices that you might have for replacement capacitors and in the background here I've got a couple of capacitors this is a normal high quality uh, electrolytic capacitor it's aluminum and it's radial leaded and so you've got a negative side on here which is in the white and then the rest of the capacitor is dark so that other leg is the positive and then you'll notice that it has a a uh, capacitance rating on the side as well as a voltage rating. So this one uh, happens to be 4.7 microfarads and then we've got 250 volts. So that's just an example of the majority of the capacitors you're going to run into that you're going to need to change. Other capacitors are most likely not going to need to be changed. So the next thing we're going to jump over here to is a copy of a service manual for a PVM that has uh, a lot of electrolytic capacitors in it and we're going to go through now and make the kit for this but just to show you you can get in the back of these service manuals this is on about the hundred and fourth page of that manual and it does list here our G board which is our power supply unit for this particular PVM and then it's got a parts list here for everything that is a capacitor first off so it's in alphabetical order so it starts with capacitor. Now if we look through these capacitor listings, there are quite a few on this board, but uh, the ones we're going to only concentrate on are the ones that say elect, e -L -E -C -T, or electrolytic. These other types, these film and ceramics, they don't generally go bad and we don't need to replace them. So today we're going to go through and first look at some of these uh, electrolytic capacitors and so if you're making a kit the first thing you'll notice is you want to go down here uh, for example for your G board and the first one you'll run into that's electrolytic is C616 so you can record that and it will tell you a microfarad capacity which is 47 and then a tolerance which is 20 percent and then it'll give you a voltage rating for the capacitor and all that is written on the side of the capacitor like I showed you in the previous picture. But there's a lot more information on a capacitor that's going to determine a lot uh, uh, whether, you know, how long it's going to be uh, lasting and how well it performs in the machine. So we're going to talk about some other things you can look for for a replacement capacitor besides just the simple um, cap capacitance, tolerance, and voltage rating. Some of the other things you can consider would be, uh, first off, is the size of the capacitor. So this is a backside of our G board, which has these capacitors that we just saw. So this is B616 up at the top that you can't see, but you can see 618 has been removed. And so is 619. And then if you look at this side, you'll see this one has the positive mark. So this is the positive end of the capacitor. And then there's no marking, or you'll notice the half crescent moon that is uh, marking the negative side on there. So that's just one more thing you note. So if you do remove it, you can tell which way they go back in place. Uh, but also, the next thing I, I mentioned you might want to consider would be the size of the capacitor. Most capacitors are going to come in a standard size, but occasionally you'll run into ones that may need to be a thinner and have a smaller distance between the two leads. So what you can do is you can go in and you can measure the distance on the board between these two leads. Because when you buy a capacitor, uh, and I'll show you that coming up, one of the statistics it will give you is the size of the capacitor. And just getting a different size capacitor that's not perfect, that's not going to really uh, impact the performance of the machine. And it's, it's perfectly safe, honestly, most of the times. It's just it's not as easy to replace. Um, and it doesn't fit in as cleanly sometimes if you don't get the exact size. So uh, that's one other thing to consider is that size on there. And then another thing to consider is going to be our temperature rating on the capacitor. 
Uh, they'll have a minimum rating generally in CRTs of 85 degrees Celsius, but it does go up from there, and that heat is going to impact our last thing that we're going to be really concentrated on, and that is our lifespan. So let's go now and go over to an order sheet, and I've actually been working with Mouser. That's the distributor I work with most of the time, and so you can go in and use any other distributor such as DigiKey or any other major parts distributor that you may like yourself. But again, I've always used Mouser, and that's the one I'm going to show you through today. So don't feel obligated, though, to use them to get things like capacitors and other parts. So for example, I'm here. Let's say I want to go in and look at some capacitors. Well, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to type in um, aluminum electrolytic capacitor, and I even like to add radial. And that's just going to uh, limit our number of capacitors we're going to get back to replace because we don't want to see a lot of other you know types of capacitors and so what we're going to do is we're going to go in here now and we'll try to order a replacement from our cap kit over here let's pick capacitor 618 which is a 10 microfarad 50 volt capacitor so if we go over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go after my radial i'm going to type in 10 microfarad and you can type that by typing in uf and then you hit a space and then 50 volts and then i'll hit a search and we'll see what comes up all right so our results have pulled up let's see if i can get this over in the screen a little bit more but our results have come back with almost 500 different capacitors for options for us. Let me see if I could, there we go, scale that down a little bit, get that all onto the screen, and then we'll kind of go from there. So we've got 470 choices. What I'd like to do is I'd like to select one that's in stock. And today I'm going to look at my favorite brand. Now there are a lot of great brands. Most of these listed on here are really top notch that you have even a choice of, but I've primarily been using Nishikon. So that's the one that I'm going to select, and then I'm going to hit apply to those filters. And then it's going to give me even more choices. And that way now we can talk about other things that we, we might want to consider when we're purchasing a capacitor because we still have almost 100. We have 98 choices to choose from. So uh, we can, again, narrow it down a little bit on here. And if we look at our stuff we want to narrow it down by you can do it by the spacing but we're not concerned about that as much we're definitely going to select 105 degrees celsius and then we're going to select 50 volts just to make sure we only get 50 volts back and then we're going to leave the rest of them blank so we can talk about uh, some other things so we'll apply those filters and see how many it gives us back that are in stock so that takes it down to 26 this is going to be much more helpful now we can go down here and we can look at some of Nishikun's products that came back that are higher tolerance and have, uh, you know, different, they're all going to be a little bit different characteristics from this point on. And, but, but it does give us uh, a lot, a lot lower number to choose from. So next thing you're going to run into are some interesting terms that you'll see on a lot of these. Most of the ones you're going to find nowadays are going to say this, they're going to say low impedance electrolytic capacitor which that is fine to use in CRT uh, replacement and repair. And so you're going to have, it's going to either list that or it's going to list a general use electrolytic capacitor. Either one of those is going to be fine for your, uh, for your CRT repair. Most of the time, the low impedance electrolytic capacitors are a little bit higher quality and last longer. So this meets all those specifications that we put in here where it's definitely radial, it's got uh, aluminum electrolytic, it's 50 volts DC, the capacitance is 10 microfarads, 105 degrees Celsius temperature rating, and then here's our size if that's important to us. And then this is one of the more important things we're looking at is our lifespan. Now this 5,000 hours, that's rated at 5,000 hours if it's at 105 degrees Celsius constantly which most of the time these capacitors aren't going to be running that high of a heat. So their real lifespan can sometimes be um, as much as three times that number up to 10 times that number if it's not 
currently under a high heat load. So just keep that in mind. That's why I'm going to shoot for 5,000 hours on the majority of my replacement capacitors. It's going to be 5,000 hours or more for a replacement capacitor. Now, one other thing you'll notice here is there are some letters in front of these capacitors when it says by the manufacturer. You've got a UH and uh, some other UHE, and then you'll notice it on some other capacitors. For example, this one right here says UHD. This is another different valued capacitor but it is by Nishikon and those will determine again the product line that you're looking at for a specific capacitor. So if we go down here um, and look at Nishikon's specific product designation for these capacitors, it can help us actually narrow down to where we can eliminate a lot of these capacitors that we might be seeing that are coming back as in stock as not being really suitable for what we're gonna do. And uh, for example, if we look here, these U B, uh, UBY and UXY, neither of those are really going to be the greatest for our um, our CRT repair. And, and I'll pull up uh, kind of the explanation on here why. First off, their life cycles are featured to be up to about 3,000 hours. And um, it does sound good because it's it's got an anti-vibration structure. However, this is going to be a capacitor that's used to a lot of load, heavy-duty services, and uh, where you've got a lot of vibrations and uh, v you know vitality is required or heavy-duty services are required. So, it's not that it's not a you know it would be probably work fine, but again, it's built to do uh, things in a car that are probably going to be a little bit more stressful in the capacitor than we need to get for. So those two I don't uh, recommend too much. But if you look down here at the other brands that they have or the other series Nishikon that they've come out with, we're going to look specifically at the ULD series and the UHW series, which if we go in here, it does give us uh, the capacitance range. So that's important to note when you're looking for a capacitor. And then it tells us the life strains or the life uh, expectancy. But the reason I'm highlighting these is these are gonna, you'll, you'll, when you go search, search through the capacitors, you're gonna run into, if you don't do the things that I talked to you about, about changing the temperature up filters, you're gonna find a lot of lower quality ones that are only 85 degree rated and their lifespan is not gonna be as big. But these higher end quality um, capacitors do have a higher lifespan and also tend to start at that 105 degrees Celsius range. So, there's just some more information on this one, but the reason I bring this one up, it is, this is ideal for power supplies. It says for LED lighting, which um, is the modern use for a lot of these, but even uh, they're not going to have, you know, a modern use listed as being a capacitor designed specifically for CRTs anymore. But uh, that's one to consider. And then the UHW is the same thing. It just has a different voltage range. And you can tell down here that these are really high um, quality. Again, this one has up to 10,000 hours at 105 degrees Celsius, which is just an incredible, incredibly durable uh, capacitor, way more durable than, than most of the ones that you'll be removing and replacing in your current electronic device. And so when you go through here and you found a cap, for example, this ca capacitor right here, it is many sized. So that is the one drawback that I would be considered is I would definitely go then and check to make sure that this size would fit in to my spot back here on my picture. Um, I would want to make sure and take a little measuring device and measure the distance between here and make sure that that is not a huge problem before I place an order for this mini size one because other than that it is pretty much perfect for the application here and um, again that the the real issue is you're just gonna have a lack of information now if you do have a service manual and it says specifically low impedance or it gives you an even an ESR rating there is a formula to calculate to figure out you know what the uh, impedance needs to be or impedance needs to be on the exact capacitor for like the ripple current which is listed on here and things like that but again that's only if it's specified in the 
manual. Otherwise, you can really use either the low impedance or the um, general use capacitors. So anyway, once again, you pick your capacitor, you can go in here and then you just uh, add the number that you want and hit buy and it'll go and this company will put it in a shopping cart nicely for you. And if you create a profile, you can even save uh, your, your car, your builds that you build on here. And um, so that's very handy. But that's pretty much how to go through and determine the difference. Now, you can also use these sites will generally have a lot of good information. So if you want to use a different type of capacitor, they have all this stuff. And then if you even want to do a deeper dive, there is the manufacturer's data sheet here available directly on this web page for each one of these parts. And it gives you even more information on the exact readouts for each capacitor and then um, again like right here it tells you the series name so we talked about the uh series so anyway that's uh that's just a look at the capacitors and if you guys have any more questions about capacitors feel, please feel free to leave me a comment below uh, but i hope this helps you kind of understand a little bit more just remember you're going to want to um, look for again high heat tolerance and the right, of course, capacitance and voltage rating, and then make sure it has a 20% tolerance or whatever tolerance is referred to in your manual, and then um, just make sure it fits in there, and you'll be good to go. And like I say, if you use these high-end capacitors, it will last 10,000 hours of stress time, which is more like 20,000 hours of actual use time on, for example, a CRT. Thanks again for watching today, everybody. I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.